course. I love watching Whisper Rambles, story times, life updates, anything with just pure Whisper Rambling. That's like, that's my thing. So, um, I thought that I would do a Whisper Ramble slash life update slash reflection on 2020. That kind of thing. This is very unplanned. Normally I come into these rambles with at least a list of like talking points. Uh, today I have nothing. Literally just sat down, turned on the camera, and we're just gonna talk. So, um, I hope that you all had a great holiday season. For those of you who celebrate, I hope you all had a happy and safe New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I had a much, much needed four-day weekend. I was off Tuesday and Wednesday like normal, and then I was off Thursday and Friday, and oh, it was so needed. <laughs> I was just, you know, you get mentally exhausted just from life and from work and working in news can be mentally draining to say the least for reasons that I'm sure you can imagine so I was very happy to have that break also side note in case you haven't realized I'm using natural lighting today I'm sitting right in front of a window I'm sitting on the floor I want it to just be like comfy and uh, casual and again just like try to spice it up a little bit from just like my normal setup anyway so hopefully it's not too bright too harsh I don't think it is but anyway so yes I'm back at work now sadly but no it's okay um Was the year I became a full-time television. 
television studio director after being freelance for years and wanting to be full-time, a position finally opened for me and I became full-time. It was the year that I paid off my first car. Um, it was the year that I reached a fitness goal and learned how to take better care of my body and for the first time in years, I don't even know how many years, I feel very comfortable in my own skin and very happy with who I am, not just physically, but just with everything that comes along with that. So that's what I mean by 2020 being a good year. I will say after college, so I graduated college in 2018, so from the rest, for the rest of 2018 and 2019, there were, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get kind of deep for a second, bear with me, there were a lot of things that I did not like about myself, I didn't like hate myself or anything, not even close, but there were a lot of things that I wasn't very happy about, and I guess I didn't know how to change them, and I guess I tried to overcompensate how I was feeling in other ways, whether it was, I don't know, wanting to change my hair color, not that there's anything wrong with that, or, because dyeing your hair is fun, it's fun, but, um, or, like, what's another example? Uh, I'll be very honest with you, there were times I would go out with my friends and I would drink too much. I know a lot of you are going to come for me, aren't you a Christian? I'm not going to get into it, but just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're perfect. You go through highs and lows, and you got to figure things out for yourself as you grow, as you grow up and as you get older. Um, so when the whole pandemic started and when, you know, bars and clubs and everything that I would do with my friends when they weren't open and I was stuck at home like we all were, I was forced to face myself and when you have a lot of things that you are not happy about when it comes to yourself and you can't go anywhere and you're stuck at home, you're stuck with all of that and so it was either sit at home and like be unhappy about myself or figure out how to change it. So, I don't know. I wasn't expecting to go into all that. A lot of that I've also, like, never really told, like, anyone. So, okay, there we go. Um, so anyway, that was, like, my 2020. It, it wasn't perfect at all. There were things that happened that were not so great, but as a overall year, help myself mature and become very happy in my own skin. I don't know. So that was my 2020. But again, I hope you don't take that like offensively by me saying all that, knowing everything else that happened in 2020. So I hope that all made sense. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Work has been going really well. It is still, like I said, it is still exhausting sometimes uh, mentally and then over the holiday season I was working crazy hours the whole month of December I was pretty much at work at either 4 or 5 a.m. every day which normally my hours during the pandemic have been weekdays 10 a.m. which is oh, the best in time for me 10 a.m. is beautiful um, and then the weekends I would be in at 5 that's like my normal but um, just because of like holiday schedules and some people calling out and we had to all kind of cover each other and cover each other's shifts and stuff, I was moving around a lot. And so I was very tired for the month of December. Uh, and we had like a big snowstorm, which if you work in news, when you tell everyone to stay home because it's dangerous, you still have to go in and you still have, like that's when we work the most is when we tell everyone else to stay home. 
So that was a long day. I think I worked like a 10 or 11 hour shift, something like that. Which, when you work like at my job, when it's storm coverage like that, um, you have to be prepared to work a 12 hour shift. Like you really don't have an out time. You just kind of stay until you're done kind of deal. So that was a long day. That was exhausting. That like took a toll on me for like a good two days. I was like, I was so shot. Um, and then yesterday, actually, I was, if anyone doesn't know, by the way, I mentioned it earlier, but if you're wondering like what my job is, because I get that comment all the time, I am a director for a news station. So I work in the control room and I direct the live shows and whatever. Okay, so yesterday I had to direct this like a special show kind of where it's not live, it's not like a news show, but it's um it's just another special segment that airs like once a week. And I hadn't directed one since last January. So it's been a year. And I was scared. I was like genuinely nervous for like the past week because I knew it was coming. And I I've been scheduled to do it like weeks prior, but something always happened and it was always canceled or the president was set to speak and so it got canceled or a guest canceled or whatever. There was always a reason why I never had to do it. And in the moment, of course, I'm like happy. I'm like, I don't have to do it. Okay. But then after a while, I was like, all right, I need to be able to like know that I can do this. So I just want to like rip the bandaid and just do it. And so yesterday I did it and it went really, it was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. So I feel like I have such like a weight lifted off my shoulders that now I know like I have to do one next Monday too and now I know I can do it and now I'm like not even stressed about it. So that's a really good feeling. Um, that's like a, a little mini accomplishment that I'm feeling right now. Um, so now I don't have to be nervous anymore for all the weeks to come where I have to do it again. So that was cool. I guess I will update you on my car situation, which has been a nightmare, to say the least. Oh, this shirt keeps falling. It's a little bit big. Anyway, um, so if you did not watch my last little, it was like a mini life update where I was outside with my little lo-fi microphone. Um, I was in an accident. I'm obviously okay. I'm fine. My car, not so much. Um, this happened on Friday, December 18th, and I was driving home from work, minding my business, about to get off the highway, and I hear, or feel, rather, boom, the back of my car. And so, I, like, stopped, obviously, and I remember I was like, are you kidding me? I was, when it first happened, I was, I was mad, but then I, I collected myself, because, you know, these things happen. Uh, so yeah, I was rear-ended, and, uh, my car was not drivable, so they towed it away, the battery actually died, and the car, the tire was, one of the tires was shot, so it had to be towed, and it has just been this is my first time, like, really having to deal with insurance companies and going through the guy's insurance because I don't, don't really want to go through mine because it wasn't my fault and blah, 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 blah. Um, but this dude, like, was so, so I, I, I totally messed up and I didn't take a picture of his insurance card, which, pro tip, if you're ever in an accident, do that right away. Take a picture of his license plate, his or her license plate, driver's license, an insurance card, and get the phone number. I did not get the insurance card. And so when I took it to the auto body shop, they're like, okay, we want to get the ball rolling. Like, show me his, uh, his insurance card. And I was like, oops. Like, I felt like such an idiot. But in the moment, you're so, like, frazzled and there's so much happening that you just, I don't know, I just didn't think about it, even though I knew I had to, but I just, anyway, so, I had to call his insurance and basically try to find him and, like, his policy number and whatever, and they were like, no, we can't 
find it for you, sorry. So I went through my insurance and I gave them all the same information and they found him in about 30 seconds. So then I was able to call back his insurance because his, his insurance doesn't really want to help me because I'm not one of their drivers. So they've been like near impossible to work with and it's around the holidays too. So that makes it so much worse. The, I think it's called an adjuster. I think, I don't know. That was assigned to me um, through his insurance. He just, he wasn't returning my calls. He never answered when I called and I, it took two weeks, two whole weeks for me to talk to him for the first time. That's horrible. That's so bad. So my car is just like sitting in the shop and the guys at the auto body, they're very nice, but they keep calling and they're like, all right, so what's the deal? It's just been a nightmare. And then uh, they told me like what they estimated the cost would be. Obviously, you know, the insurance pays for it, but they told me and I was like, it was probably like double what I was expecting uh, because it just like everything in the back of my car needs to be replaced. So like the trunk, the bumper, the headlights, like just like everything in the back and then the new parts have to be molded together to the other parts of the car. So it's going to take a lot. And then you know how like it goes with the auto body shops. Half of it is labor, like for the workers to get paid. So and then it was just like everything that could have gone wrong <laughs> went wrong. And so the guy's insurance called me and they were like, um, they basically told me that they wouldn't cover the whole thing because I don't want to get into too many details, but basically the guy that hit me only pays for a certain amount of coverage. He has like a cap on his account. And so if the damage is more than that amount, they will not pay for the rest, which I didn't even know was a thing. Like, wh like what if I had like a Tesla or like a Mercedes or something? I, I don't and won't for a long time, if ever. But what if I did? Like, what you, like what happens? Like, you know what I mean? Like, who, who's going to pay for that? So they basically said that they wouldn't pay for the whole thing and the money that they will give also includes covering my rental. So it's just, oh. so then I had to go through my insurance and basically tell them what's going on and like make sure that they would pay for the rest. But where we are now is I'm waiting for an inspector to go look at my car, which mind you, this has been, happened two and a half weeks ago and no one has gone to see my car. Maybe it's happening like today or tomorrow, I don't know. But legally it's supposed to be, they have six days to go look at the car and it's been two and a half weeks. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I'm waiting for someone to go see my car to decide whether it is worth fixing or not because if the cost of the damages is like equivalent to just like what my car is worth, then they may say, it's not even worth it. Here's a check for the worth of your car. Go find a new car. If that happens, <laughs> I'm going to be so sad. <laughs> I mean, for those of you who've been with me for a while, you maybe like remember me talking about my car search and whatever. I searched for my car for such a long time, like months and months and I finally found it. It was everything I wanted. I just paid it off like four months ago and all of a sudden it's like, actually, you might have to go buy a new one. And I would have to also shell out some money as well to put towards the new car, which is even more annoying because it wasn't my fault. So, um, I mean, I don't know. These things happen. This my dad said, welcome to adulthood. That's what he said. So, yeah, I feel welcomed. Um, so that's what we're dealing with right now. I am praying and having faith that they decide to just fix my car. That would be wonderful. Um, I don't think it would have, like, they would be able to fix it to, to be, like, good as new. Because sometimes if an accident happens, it may still cause, like, real internal damage to the car and you don't want that. And obviously, I wouldn't want that if I knew I maybe wouldn't be 
so safe, then I would say, all right, fine, like, maybe a new car is necessary. But I think they'll be able to fix it. I know there are problems with the suspension of the car that can be fixed. Um, externally, obviously, it can be fixed, so we will see. The fate of my Mabel, that's my car's name, the fate of Mabel is in their hands for right now. They estimated uh, it being ready around January 22nd, January 23rd, which is a long time from now. Uh, so we'll see if they even fix it, that is. So I've already started kind of like window shopping online just in case for cars, but none of them are the same. We'll see, but it's funny because the the rental that I ended up getting, which the, the rental, the whole other thing, they, I won't even get, get into that. I may have to switch rental cars at some point, let's just say that, but the one that I have right now is the exact same car that hit me, just in a different color. And what's funny about that is last year my mom was hit, or two years ago, I don't know, she was hit. And the rental car that she got was the same car that hit her. It's just, it's ironic. It's funny. Um, and yeah, so that's what's going on with that. It has been a process. I'm sorry if that was all really boring. <laughs> but that's what's going on. You want a life update? There you go. You got it. Um, as far as, you know, situation. I mean, you guys know what's going on. You guys have the news. Um, where I am right now, things are still open, um, because it's not really bad here, luckily, where I live. So, like, you can, I mean, I don't really, but you can do indoor dining here. They just space you out, but you can eat inside. Um, salons are open. Uh, like, I don't know, it's pretty much, it's definitely not normal. Like, you still have to socially distance and wear your mask, and they limit the number of people. Like, in stores, they limit the amount of people in there, and you have to wait outside until the number is good, and blah, blah, blah. Um, but nothing is, like, really closed, closed yet, dare I say. Um, so I'm able to still, like, I feel comfortable, like, going grocery shopping and, like, getting my food stuff oh uh, because in the beginning like we really didn't even go to the supermarket we bought like a whole bunch of like frozen stuff and we just like lived on that um but i still feel comfortable like going and getting my stuff um but where i where i like usually like hang out with my friends um and like where i work and stuff that's kind of starting to close again uh indoor dining isn't a thing uh they have outdoor dining but like who's gonna sit in 30 degree weather. I mean, I guess some people do it. Uh, I wouldn't rush to do it just because I don't like being cold, but you can sit and eat outside. Um, I give you props if you've done that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've, it's just, it's like a roller coaster, right? Like it started really bad and it was really scary because no one knew what it was. And then it slowly started to see, it didn't seem like it was kind of getting better. And then there were more spikes and now we're kind of like going in the opposite direction. But at the same time, you know, I have faith that we're eventually getting there and it'll slowly start to uh, get better. I don't, I am not uh, saying that things will be normal anytime soon at all. And I think rather than just be miserable about it, we just have to adapt to it. Um, it's all about your mindset. Your mindset is a choice and it really does make all the difference. Um, and yeah, I, I just, uh, my thing is I just, like, like, I feel so bad for like small business owners and stuff. I really do. Cause it's, it's rough. I mean, like even my dad, my dad's a chef. Um, on the, he's like a te he's a teacher, but he's also a chef on the side, and he's not doing that this year. Like there's 
none of that. So people are losing like a big chunk, if not all, of their income. So I just feel so bad. And then like kids that are in school, like I asked my sister the other day, my sister is a freshman in high school. Oh, wow. That's like the first time I really said that out loud. I just realized how old she is. How old I am. Yikes. Um, anyway, she's a uh, freshman in high school. And I asked her the other day, I said, do you feel like you're learning? She said, no. <laughs> and it's not their fault. It's no one's fault. It's just, oh, we are living in such unprecedented times where literally no one, like, knew how to go about this. We're all just kind of learning as we go. And I still can't believe that this is the life that we're living right now. Like, this is real life. We're going to grow up to tell our kids about like 2020 and 2021 and speaking of kids is it just me or is it every time I go on Instagram or Facebook someone is either engaged or pregnant not that it's a bad thing I'm very happy for them but I'm like what is happening <laughs> everyone like so many people I know from like high school and college are having babies and getting engaged and like some of them own houses so happy for them that's i think that's amazing but like wow i'm single i mean like we are just living very different lives um also where are people meeting people like i just i don't know oh, i'm not bitter i swear i'm really not like i'm genuinely very happy for them this girl that i was friends with um from second grade to we're not friends anymore sadly but from like second grade to like senior year of high school we were really good friends and she just got engaged and i was like i saw it on instagram and i was like oh um it's just it's it's weird it's like it also also makes me feel really old because like it's not really weird like i'm in my mid-20s now it's not weird it's kind of normal-ish so I don't know so I don't know is that just me or are you guys seeing that too I don't know but anyway as far as future videos go if you follow me on Twitter which if you don't you should it's just soft ASMR and the number one I posted um, my next upcoming four videos um, so if you saw that, you already know kind of what's coming, but I kind of messed up on that tweet because I forgot to include this one that I'm filming right now. So I should have put the next five upcoming videos and it was my Secret Santa unboxing, which was the last video. Then this one, a life update. The next one after this one is going to be another Netflix video. I love filming those. Uh, I'm actually going to film that today. And then I'm gonna do a mukbang. I'm gonna make a, oh god, let's see if I can remember the, how to pronounce it, charcuterie board. Fancy word for a cheese board with like crackers and salami and cheese and I will drink wine with it. I'm very excited. I'm gonna film that next week. Um, so that's coming and then this company that makes really awesome looking cookies reached out to me and like wanted to collaborate. So, if they're here in time, then I'll also include the cookies in that mukbang as well. Uh, those cookies look so good. It's like a cookie with like an Oreo in the middle and like, I don't know, you'll, you'll see, you'll see. I'm very excited for those. So that's going to be another video and then I'm going to do uh, another true crime after that and I'll just tell you what case I'm doing. You won't see it for a while. This will be up probably in like a week and a half maybe close to two weeks, I don't know, but it's coming. It's the case of the Menendez brothers. I have been for a while now um, researching them. I watched pretty much the whole trial on YouTube. And there's also an ABC special that I think aired maybe two years ago. I saw it on Hulu. Um, so if you want to watch it, it's, it's there. Um, it's like an hour and a half long. And this case is very, I'm not going to go into it now at all because we're going to do a whole video on it, but it's very interesting to me. Um, and I'm very intrigued to see what your thoughts will be on it. So if you don't know that case,
just maybe don't read into it too much like wait for my video um, but no you can look it up if you want um, I first found out about them like that case through TikTok surprisingly um, and then it just kept like popping up on YouTube for some reason I guess because I watched your crime video so it just they recommended it to me and I was like oh yeah I want to cover this one so probably this coming weekend I'll write out my notes for it and start preparing for that so those are the next uh, four or five videos that you have coming four videos that you have coming so you can be prepared uh, I'm starting off this year with a bang like my favorite kinds of videos to make I'm just gonna put them all in January because I can so So, thank you guys 